Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated. It's Mary Jane. Let's talk about Love and Hip Hop Miami Season 2, Episode 2, Family Matters. This was like mm, one of them episodes like you could be like, yo, I can watch it or I can't. And let's just talk about Bobby Lights. His outfit was ferocious. His whole get up was just terrible. Um, Prince get up was terrible. Um, what's her name? Jojo always looked like she needs to take a shit. Her outfits just don't fit. Her breasts just be flopping all over the place. Amada, you know, she was working out in the gym, but it looked terrible. And then at the restaurant, it looked terrible. Jesse looked terrible, all in fucking colors on. It was just like, okay, what's really good? Tip, you know, she's on the come up, so we ain't even gonna talk about tip. So who, like, and... Trina looked, I, I, like, she better, she, she barely looked like the Diamond Princess, you know what I'm saying, like, she didn't look like Trina, like, where's the Diamond Princess at, where's the boss bitch at, like, she didn't look like, you know, she was any, like, she's in that category, you know, like, the way that she was dressed on the show, I guess, um, the people that looked the nicest was, you know, Pretty Ricky, Pretty Ricky was dressing all right, except for, you know, um, um, Slickums, he's the only one that didn't look, you know, presentable, but, you know, the rest of Pretty Ricky, they did the best with their entire, the way that they would dress, you know, Joy was like, okay, but you couldn't really tell because she was in the dark, so it is all good, Catastrophic, um, I think his name is Catastrophic, he can actually rap, he sounds like he can make good music, you know, we got, we got his sob story, it was like, damn, man, dude, I went through a lot, and then we get, you know, what's his name, Prince's sad story of being friends with, you know, um, Bobby Lights. People think he's gay. People think he's in a relationship with Bobby Lights. So we got that sad story. We got Bobby going back and forth talking shit about his friends, starting the drama. You also got JoJo going back and forth talking shit, starting drama too as well. But Amara doesn't know that, you know, JoJo actually went back and told, you know, um, what's his name, Bobby Lights, that, you know, she don't like him and he's shady, he's drama or whatever, so I guess that's gonna come out later on, but I'm like, and you know, Trick doesn't want to do this song, this album, with Trina, he doesn't think she's a diamond princess anymore, he's he's tired of making these feel-good songs, I don't know what's up with Trick Daddy, I found out that Trick Daddy is 44 years old, everybody in the crib was thinking that he was like in his 60s, I was like, shit, what's really going on, so anyways, let's just get it started, so we got Trick Daddy, he's with his son, his son is making good grades, he's a good boy, he's nothing like his father, thank you Jesus, and we have, you know, Gunplay chilling too as well, Gunplay says he got a 14 year old son too, and he ain't nothing like him, he's a good boy, they make the honor roll, so that's good, and we got Trick basically dissing Trina, talking about Trina got nothing but yes man around her, people telling her that her music sounds good, but it really doesn't, he can't deal with her, and basically, you know, he's on that bullshit because I don't think he got to end him. I don't think he even wants to do another album. I think he wants to do an album by himself. Or he just want to do an album with a bunch of Miami people, Miami dudes. Or he just don't want to do music. I don't know what it is. But Trick is dragging his feet. Maybe his health is not good. I don't know. You know, his house is going on the floor closure so he got to be hustling and trying to make this money trying to make shit right then we get ray j and we get fizz you know they come through or whatever basically talk to spectacular about you know getting his group back together because the shit is messed up his brothers are messed up his father's messed up his father's a thief his father and his brothers don't get along spectacular chose his mother his other brothers chose to go with the father so basically they're trying to get the shit back together trying to get the group back together so he was talking to ray j and fizz basically they're making their parents on you know Loving Hip Hop Miami, basically trying to boost up the ratings, but that was cool, so it is what it is. And so we get to this point, so we get Bobby Lights, we get, you know, JoJo, and we get Prince, basically, Bobby Lights is doing his music, he's in a terrible outfit, terrible, whatever he got on, he got on fishnet stockings with his hat, Prince, I don't know what the fuck Prince is trying to go for, and JoJo, you know, you got too many, you got too many lines on your body for you to be wearing these clothes that fit so tight, and then, and then the wig or all the extra hair that you got in, it's just way too much, like, you, you coming off like you poor, girl, you know, last season, he was this big-time millionaire and shit like that. So, we have that situation. So, basically, you know, JoJo, she shows up, and she confronts, you know, Bobby. Basically, Bobby, I got confronted by Tip. Tip t telling me that I'm fake because, you know, I'm telling you stuff about Prince. 
and and all this other stuff. And Prince was like, what are you guys talking about? What are you saying? What did I do? And basically, Bobby was like, well, you know, JoJo told me that you ain't really my friend. You might be using me. And I ain't the first time I heard it. I heard it from other people, too, as well. And Prince is like, yo, JoJo, why are you even coming at me like that? How long have I known you? We find out that JoJo and Prince have known each other for, like, 10 years. And I guess she feels like Bob Bobby's a better friend because he's un up under her. He's living in her house. And it's like, damn, Bobby, you don't got no respect for the person that you living with and shit like that where you just throw her under the bus like it ain't nobody's business i was like okay miss me with that and so you know prince was like how can you say that how long have i known you and jojo was like what are you talking about um you i don't feel like you are his friend I don't, at least she was real about it at least jojo was real was like yeah i said it i said it i said it and basically saying that yes i did say you ain't his friend you know you really ain't his friend like you fake or whatever and she was like Prince is like, yo, where's this coming from? Of all the people on this show, I'm thinking that me and you will never have a problem. That me and you will always be tight. Like, so Prince is shocked about this. And he was like, yo, so he gets close. But he's like, you know, a couple of feet away, at least like eight, seven feet away from her. And she's yelling, get out of my face. And so I guess they didn't show her pushing Prince. Or I didn't see it. So she pushed Prince. Prince gets all out of character. He's yelling. He's screaming. He's running from security. He's a fast little mother sucker, though. Did he ever run track? Because he was fast. Security could not contain Prince. And so then Prince is yelling at Bobby, like, Bobby, how come you didn't tell me none of this shit was going on? So really, Prince is, like, caught in, in the headlights. He's like a deer in headlights because basically he's thinking JoJo's his friend. He's thinking, you know, Bobby's his friend and everything, and he's getting all this slack for Bobby, and Bobby ain't even coming to him and telling him what people are saying about him, especially that it's supposed to be so tight. And now she's coming at me, and I don't even know where this is coming from. So Prince is running all over the place, taking off his shirt. He's doing extra. I don't know if he's on that little, you know, that Miami cake over there. He's taking some cake or whatever. I think JoJo be taking some cake too as well, allegedly. But Prince was upset. I think Prince was more upset because she pushed him and he couldn't defend himself. He couldn't hit her back because she was a woman and, you know, he doesn't hit women. And then, you know, for her to have the goals to put her hands on him, he was upset and disrespecting. Plus, it's on camera. He's a young dude and his reputation is everything. His image is everything. So he was really pissed off. He was behind the dumpster crying. Then you got Bobby Lights coming over there to console his friend, his homie, homie lover friend. I don't know. And so Prince is going off on Bobby or whatever. So I guess they leave on a bad note. And JoJo was like, fuck him, F him, you extra. All these dudes act like bitches or whatever. Um, if he if he would have beat you up, it would have been wrong. Keep your hands to yourself, JoJo. You already threw a drink on Jesse. Oh, now you're putting your hands on, you know, um, Prince, but I believe, you know, you're doing all this to be extra because you need that money because supposedly your father ain't in the picture no more. So you're doing a lot to be a lot extra. So we have that situation. I was like, damn, that's how we're going to do it. And so then we move on to, you know, Miami tip or whatever. She goes over to Catastrophic. I think that's his name. Uh, Catastrophic. That's what I'm going to call him. His music is good. We find out he was shot 17 times. So he was shot more than, you know, 50 Cent. But he's still living. And his career, being a rapper, is for, from his older brother. But his older brother's doing 30 years behind bars. And it seems like Catastrophic or Catastrophic or whatever his name is. He seemed like a good kid. Basically, he got a crush on Joy, and he wants to meet up with Joy, and he's having a show, and his show, he actually does sound good. I think he I think he can actually make good music. Maybe he can get on the TNT album. Maybe something can happen with that bullshit, but he actually can rap. So we have, so we have that situation going on, and, um, you know, his mother and his sister are proud of him or whoever the people in the, in the um, picture with him is. And so, you know... He wants that joy, baby. He wants that joy. He wants the homie love of joy. And so, uh, moving on from that, we get Trina. Trina, she's stressed out. She just moved in a new house. Now she's dating her best friend. Her best friend, I think his name is Ray or whatever. They living together. They moving in. I don't know. You know, she's in this big-ass mansion, but people are claiming that she's broke. So, I guess she got money at this mansion. It's rented. I don't know. She's moving out. She's moving out. Oh, they moving in together. So anyway, somewhere, somehow they got money living in this big ass mansion is beautiful. It's nice. And Miami is expensive. And basically she's telling, you know, her man about, you know, telling Ray about the TNT project and how upset she is and how much she wants to work on this project, make something happen. Blase in a third. He was like, everything that you telling me, tell Trick, give it 
one more shot and see how it works. I don't know why Trina is stressing them because the record label is calling. I guess they got a little payola for them or some money for them. So, you know, she really wants this to work. I'm like, damn, I wish she could find somebody else to work with. For real, for real, so we can hear some 2019 Trina would be nice. So moving on from that, so we got Amada and we have JoJo. See, look, look at this outfit she got on. Okay, here they go. Here they go. Here they go. So we got Amada and JoJo. So basically, you know, JoJo's talking about the brunch that she that she went to, the sister talk or whatever with Jesse. And basically, she's telling Amada everything that went down. And she was like, you know, my mom ran my business and told me, told everybody that I was dating Pleasure P. I have no idea why you dating him, girl. But maybe because he got that cheddar, he got that duck, because you need some money. And um, you're going to get played at the end anyway. So moving on from that situation, you know, and then she also, and then my mother is being shady. My mother was like, was, was Shay there? And she was like, nah, Shay wasn't there. I was like, oh, mother, you threw a shot. So we have that situation. Then JoJo was like, I got myself in a little messy situation with Bobby. So basically I pulled up on him and everything like that, him and Prince or whatever. And basically, you know, Bobby was telling, you know, Prince everything I said about him or whatever. But I was like, you know, he is fake or whatever, you know, and, um, and we started arguing and she was like, I pushed him and he started acting all extra, blasting the third. And this is what Amara warned, you know, Jojo about getting into, you know, best friend's business and getting into that business, getting into Bobby's business with, you know, Prince because Bobby can be a little bit extra and this messy shit going on. So just mind your business. That's why I don't get involved. And so, you know, no, but Jojo got to get involved. You know, she, she's talking about one friend, she knows. Prince for 10 years, if anything, she sh she could go talk to Prince, you know, or she could just be an ear to listen to what Bobby likes instead of telling him that, you know, Prince ain't his friend. Like, you know, so it seems like, like she was not never really cool with Prince if she can just diss Prince like that. Or maybe she feels more close to Bobby because he's living under her breast or whatever. So it is what it is. And so then JoJo was like, hey, listen, let me just tell you something, too. And I had to defend you, too, because, you know, Tip came at me and was all like, you was in Gunplay's D DM. And she was like, I was not in his DMs. I would never be in his D DMs. And I believe she said, do I look desperate? And if I want anybody's man, I can have them. And I believe she can have any of their men. And she gave them all a shot. She can have them. But she denied that situation. And then JoJo brings up Jesse. Jesse got a problem with you because you was questioning her man whether he was cheating on her Amada was Amada didn't deny it but she was just like I could talk and say whatever I want to say yeah but people gonna get mad you don't question somebody you just meet uh you question whether you why, why are you worried about if Jesse boyfriend is cheating on her or not you're not Jesse's friend you're not cool with her why would you want to know unless you want to get in there unless you want to have some leverage over Jesse or unless you think that you can get a lick with Jesse's man, or you wanted to see if you can take Jesse's man. So that them are inappropriate questions, because I don't go up to people that I barely even know and be like, are you cheating on your girlfriend? Only if I wanted to get down with them or get some information on them. So anyways, I might was like, I can have any man I want to. Matter of fact, you know, she was singing at TLC, I can have any man that I want to. And so my and so Jojo was like, hell yeah, you can, but you can't, Jojo. So shut the fuck up. So moving on from that, and so then you know, um, Mara was like, okay, Tip and Jesse, and then basically it is what it is with that situation, and you know the sister talk and all of the other bullshit. So moving on from that, you Jojo stay running her mouth, and so we move on to Tip. Tip is in the studio. Tip is in the studio with Jesse and her sister, and basically, you know, they have a, they're talking about sister talk, and then this is when, but before then, we have JoJo that wants to set up, you know, a meeting with Amada and Jesse because she thinks they can work it out, but she don't think that Tip can work it out with, you know, um, Amada. So, we have, you know, Jesse in the studio at, you know, Tip's podcast or whatever. And so they have a little conversation about, you know, sister talk. And then they also talk about, you know, her singing and wanting to be back in singing and Haitian church. And her mom really doesn't approve of what she's doing, basically in Hollywood or on Instagram or whatever. 
So we have that situation. And then they have a little sideline talk. And so then that's when Jesse tells, you know, Tip, hey, listen, you know, um, JoJo called me. I'm supposed to have drinks with a model so we could talk about things and work things out. And basically, you know, um, Jesse is telling a model to hate, I mean, telling um, Tip that, hey, listen, you know, Amada was asking my man, did he ever cheat on me? And then Amada stole my stuff through my manager or whatever about sister talk. She's this big star. Why is she taking my stuff? First of all, you need to get mad at your manager because your manager was your manager. And he took what you ever told him and he brought it to Amada. Amada didn't know. In my opinion, I don't think she knew. And if that's her manager who's going to make everything work, people steal from people. That's what it is. And it's not like she actually talked to you and heard your idea. Your former manager took your ideas to her. And he probably didn't tell her that it was your ideas because then he wouldn't look like a good manager unless he was shady like that. So, anyway, she's going, Jesse's going to have that drink with Amada and JoJo. And, you know, Tip is like, you better not because there are some messy queens, girl. Messy, messy, messy queens. So, we have that situation. And then moving on from that, we have, you know, Spectacular. He's with his wife, his brother, Baby Blue's over there. His other brother's there, and that's his mother. And so, basically, we find out that, you know, um, Spectacular is closer to his mother. His three brothers are closer to his father because when his father got out of prison, they went to go live with him and all of that other good stuff. And the mother's pretty upset with the, fi with the fiancé because Spectacular lives in California and Miami, and she thinks that it's the fiancé's fault that she took her son away. No, your son's a grown man. You got three other sons that are under your titty. Let them be there. Let them stay with you. He wants to go to, you know, um, L.A. to make money, too, as well. It's more business opportunities, too, as well. It's probably much easier for him to navigate with the things that he does with celebrity stars and, you know, stars in Hollywood because he has, like, a, a firm that ha help celebrity get their stock on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, basically to promote them. He has that company or whatever. So, anyways, the mom feels like, you know, I didn't hear it from you. I had to hear it from your fiance, but well, she's about to be your daughter. So, she, the daughter thought that, sh that Spectacular already told the mama that he was bouncing. So, she's the one that had to tell the mama. So, the mama's mad at her because she relayed the message about them moving. So, the mama got a little attitude or whatever, but at least she calmed down. Like, damn, it ain't her fault. And the last thing you want to do is be on the fiance with with the baby or whatever because then that leaves you out the picture because he's in LA and that can keep that can erase you out the picture or keep him more distance from you. And Spectacular is there to bring the family back together in order to bring, you know, um pretty Ricky back together, you have to bring the family back together because basically the whole group of brothers, most of them and they grew up together. So basically so he's there, he's having a conversation. The mom is kind of shady for that. Like, that, you know, she didn't have to do that. That was really fugazi. So, I was just like, damn. And so then we get to Catastrophic. His show, his show is lit. His show's popping. He does a good job. And then we have Bobby Lights. And we have Prince. They see each other. And they kind of upset. And they mad at each other. Because of what went down at the... um at the studio, at the dance place or whatever. So basically, you know, they're not really talking to each, each other. And Joe, I mean, and Joy is trying to mediate between them. And so basically, you know, Prince is like, yo, she put her hands on me. And you got Bobby was like, you got all extra. You was all loud. You got mad at me or whatever because you are, you, you're playing both of them against each other because you're telling JoJo about how bad, how you feel Prince is using you. Then she's telling you what you need to cut him out your life. Then you go, then Bobby, you go back and tell, um, no, you, you didn't go back and tell, you didn't go back and tell, um, Prince what happened because he was totally surprised at the, at the, um, allegations of, you know, JoJo running her mouth because he, he thought they were cool. So, basically, you should have told Prince what was up or Prince what was going on. Or you shouldn't have said nothing about whatever JoJo told you about Prince and kept it like that. Kept it 100. And just say, you know, JoJo, I just need you to be an ear to listen to. I don't really need your advice. 
But you know, Prince is the type. Of, I mean, I um, what's his name? Bobby Lace is the type of person that is gonna ask you for your advice. He's gonna ask you to critique him, and then he's gonna take what you say and run with. He's just that type of person that runs with information that people give, him, especially if it feels good, if it feels right, especially if it touches his soul. So we got joy and catastrophic. They meet up. And, you know, Joy was like, I already know who he is. So she knows that he got a crush on her. And um, I was like, damn, um, Joy is trying to make a love connection. I don't blame her. And so then we move on to Pretty Ricky. They get up and they're about to have a meeting and it goes left. We find out somewhere in Sacramento or Seattle, you know, Pleasure P was getting into a beef for somebody that was, you know, Baby Blue's boy. And spectac I mean, and and what's his name? Um, Slickums has something to do with it. And basically, they was about to go. There's about to go ham, you know, fight with you know Baby Blue's boy and all that other shit. But Baby Blue stopped it. Baby Blue was like, "Yo, listen, if I didn't stop it, you wouldn't be sitting here today." So, pleasure, people. Like, is that a threat? What are you talking about? It stopped because I stopped it. So now they going back and forth because they got a problem. Then you got, you know, Baby Blue talking about you might not even be here. I was like, damn, we're going to get it like that? And then Pleasure P was like, yo, I'm done. I don't even want to deal with this shit no more. I'm done. I don't want to do this group thing. I'm finished. So Spectacular talk P to come back. He was like, yo, P, me and you don't need... P was like, me and you don't need this group because Spectacular is a millionaire on his own. And so is, you know, Pleasure P or whatever, but Spectacular want to do this for the fans. He want to do it for the people and more income and more revenue is good, especially why not make music? Why not go on tour when you're on a TV show that everybody kind of, everybody like kind of watches, you know? So he's like, you know, let's do this. So P goes back in. So they have, so P and Baby Blue about to go at it again. And it's like Spectacular is trying to control the group and trying to get it together or whatever. But let Blue and let P talk it out. So anyways, Slickum don't give a shit. Slickum don't remember what happened back then. All he knows is he woke up drunk with handcuffs on. I don't know why women are still sleeping with Slickums. He don't use protection. He's crazy. You know he's on drugs. I don't even know why, allegedly. So, they agreed to make this shit work. They agreed to make this shit happen. And they're going to get back in the studio and make music. Let's see. <laughs> so, I'm like, whatever. I'm just like, whatever. I'm like, oh, come on. Like, it got to be more... I gotta be more to the situation. Like, it's like they're always going at it. Like, it, it, they're always going at it. It's always, and then also, you know, um, Baby Blue was, Baby Blue took Shay's side when it came to Pleasure P. And who does he know longer? That's his bandmate. So, you know, Baby Blue is kind of questionable. And they need Pleasure P because he is the lead singer of the group. But I think there's a little bit of jealousy and a little bit of control that goes on back and forth with Baby Blue and Pleasure P. And Pleasure P knows that they need him the most. And so it's just like they be holding shit over each other's head. So let's get to Trina. Trina done meet up with Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy's eating his chicken wings, his chicken bones, eating his turkey necks, eating his, I don't know, whatever food he's always, every time you see Trick Daddy, he got something in his mouth that he's eating that he's probably supposed to not be eating because he has lupus, allegedly, or diabetes, allegedly. He has something, allegedly, because he's leather. Um, He just looks so different, man. And I really thought, I couldn't believe Trick Daddy is 44. So anyways, Trina's trying to talk to him. Basically, she's not really talking to him. She's talking at him. Blah, 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 blah. My album, my album. Getting this done. The bracket level people. This and that. And he was like, I don't want to work on these soft songs. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that no more. I want to do this. She was like, well, then go ahead. Come on, do it. Lay some track down. Lay some music down. Lay something down. Come on. Let's get in the studio. Trick seems really uninterested and I think he wants Trina to be the old Trina I don't know if he even likes Trina it seems like he don't even like Trina I think he doesn't like who Trina has become and I also think that Trick is just lazy and 
he's in that type of mood where I don't think he thinks the TNT album is going to make it. Oh, they ain't paying him enough money. He's just uninterested. But, you know, he got a floor of closure going on. He probably got a lot going on with his health, too, as well. And it ain't working with him keep eating his bad food and drinking and shit like that. So, basically, I think he wants Trina to probably just listen to him. Just have a, just say, hey, what's up, Trick? What, what are we going to do? And let Trick talk. See, I think that was the problem. Trina should have let Trick talk and see where he was really coming from and see what was going on inside of him, see what was going on in his mind, why he's pushing everything away. She didn't give him a chance to talk or even find out where he's coming from, so she can only assume that he don't want to do the album and it's just because he don't want to do it, but she don't understand why or how or maybe she can get in and fix the situation if she actually knew what was going on in Trick Head, but she didn't she didn't she didn't let him talk. I wouldn't have listened to him any damn way in the first place. So moving on to that, we get the scene. We get we get Jesse. Look how Je look how tiny Jesse is compared to Amada and compared to JoJo. So, anyways, the conversation totally goes left between these two. Amada apologized because basically Jesse was like, "Why did you ask ask my man if he ever cheated on me or whatever?" But I believe that you asked him that because you wanted to jump on top of it, or you wanted to ride it, or you wanted to do something, home girl. You wanted to rock that afro back and forth, or make maybe it'll fall off, and so. Um, Amada was like, yo, <laughs> JoJo was like, you kind of getting a little disrespectful. And so then that's when Amada was like, I apologize if I did anything to make you, f the way that I talked to your man made you feel uncomfortable. I apologize. I apologize. And she was like, you better never do that again. And then Amada was like, what do you mean I better never do that? I got to do whatever I want. You can't tell me what to do just because I apologize. Now you're taking it for weakness. And she was like, no, it's not a threat. And so Jesse, I mean, so, you know, um, what's her name? JoJo was like, oh, what, is that a threat or whatever? She was like, no, it's not a threat. And so then, boom, it goes left. JoJo throws her drink with alcohol on to Jessie. Jesse gets, Jessie's mad. She's heated. Even though she's tiny and small, she's ready to go hands. She's ready to go blow, blow to blow, toe to toe. And so security runs in. Jesse was able to throw a glass. It hit the floor. It, 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 it hit the guy in the green shirt in the background. It, hit, it went near him. And then she ended up picking up a a vodka bottle and she actually hit Amada on the side, you know, near her rib cage. And then, you know, some liquor got on her. Security wasn't really holding homegirl because she's mad small. They didn't think that she can do damage, but she did a little bit of damage. Amada's upset because Amada's like, damn, see, I knew I should have stayed home. I should never been involved in this shit. Then you got Jojo yelling and screaming. Then you got Jesse talking about it's on, it's on. GP, baby, anytime I see you, it's on, it's on. I'm going to get you. You better carry yourself a baseball bat. You better carry yourself a two-by-four, too, as well. Because, you know, JoJo's, only thing JoJo's going to do is going to sit on top of you. And so Jesse said it's on with Amada, so it's going to go down, baby. Mm-mm-mm. And it didn't even have it didn't even have to go like that. After, you know, all Jesse had to say was like, you know what? Why did you ask my man this and that? So, first of all, she didn't even get down to the bottom line to find out, why are you asking my man if he ever cheated on me? What was your reason? What was the reason behind it? To see what she had to say, to see what she was on some fuck shit. But these ladies don't let people talk so they can find out what's going on. And so Amada was like, you know what? I apologize or whatever. But my Amada apologized like, you know... I, um, I apologize if it made you feel any type of way. If I made you feel uncomfortable, you're, sp you're just supposed to say, I apologize for my behavior. Boom, bada, bing. And so it, it just went, it just went left. Peace and my one love.